Well, back here in the UK, the ramifications of the conflict uh, seen on the streets. Thousands marching in London on Saturday to protest at uh, Israel's uh, incursions and bombardment, bombardment rather, into Gaza. But then videos surfacing online, appearing to show a man calling for jihad, holy war, and Suella Brabham's recent pledges to get tough on such militant protesters. Well, the Home Secretary is now to question the Met's Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, this afternoon on why uh, more was not done to arrest those preparing to call for violence. Let's speak now to former Met Officer Peter Blexley, who joins us in the studio once, once more. Um, Peter, I'm just looking at what the uh, Prime Minister's spokesman said uh, a few minutes ago in Downing Street, that the police have all the powers they need to deal with this. Yes. And, of course, this morning in one of the national newspapers, Neil Basu, former head of counterterrorism policing, very senior police officer, mm. uh, went public in saying that we raised this issue with the government, that there isn't sufficient legislation to cover the use of the word jihad. So right. I fear that the Metropolitan Police... The Commissioner, Sir Mark Rowley, and the government, through Suella Braverman, the Home Secretary, are going to be on a collision course this afternoon as they have their meeting. I would very much like to be a fly on the wall. I hope it doesn't turn in to a very heated and unsatisfactory confrontation, because when it does... It never ends well for anybody, really. Yeah, and, and decisions are, are made perhaps in the heat of the moment, not with uh, best intentions. Uh, Absolutely, because, of course, the police treasure their operational independence. Yeah. You will hear senior police officers, whether they're bosses, the Mayor of London, the Mayor of Manchester, or a police and crime commissioner, they will always say operational independence must be ours. Assessing on the scene at the time. Indeed, right. because they are the officers on the ground, the various ranks and levels and control rooms looking at the whole picture and they do really kind of treasure that independence. And I, I guess the, 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 the trouble is there's, there's much footage then that's posted online and sometimes it perhaps doesn't show the whole picture or, or it's a, a limited uh, assessment or a limited viewpoint. But we do have the Met saying that in this particular instance, there were specialist counterterrorism officers at the scene. They decided that there was no offence uh, committed, but then that Crown prosecution lawyers were also shown the footage and they agreed no offence could be identified in that footage. Well, there is an offence of um, behaviour likely to cause a breach of the peace. Right, OK. And that's a real catch-all and covers an awful lot of things. You're making a nuisance of yourself. Apparently. Exactly. And I throw that out there and there may be some viewers and listeners mm. perhaps nodding in agreement that they might have perceived that behaviour as likely to cause a breach of the peace. But let's just boil down on this word jihad, if we may, for a yeah. moment. Because the dictionary that I've used over the weekend, one description is uh, the spiritual striving against moral failings, but then if you go down to the next description of it, it's war Holy in defence of yeah. Islam. Yeah. So there are two clear and distinct different interpretations. I, for example, if I'd gone to that protest on Saturday, which I manifestly didn't, but could have sidled up to a police officer and said, those protesters over there, they need to be clumped. Mm. One description, clumped, as in thumped, perhaps, or second one, clumped, as in brought together in a mass, Corralled. like kettling, for so, example. So you're, you're, you're getting to the situation where maybe officers have got to turn up there with, with several different dictionaries, with several different interpretations of this one key word. I use it to highlight the challenges that face the police, mm. and I'm a very swift to criticise when I think they've got something fundamentally wrong, but I think, bearing in mind the size of the last two demonstrations, yeah. the last two Saturdays, 100,000 people or more, no major outbreaks of violence, no. criminal damage, rioting, quietly amongst themselves, I reckon senior police bosses are going, we've done all right. Yeah, sigh of relief. However, one reflects, if there had been a reaction to that cry of jihad and there'd been uh, a, a counter-action of some kind, that then would have been a breach of the peace, am I right in saying that, if there'd been some kind of altercation? Well, the Met did actually put out a 
a picture of that man who was seen wear, waving a black flag with Islam, Islamic, Islamic writing yeah, on it, yeah. which I can't interpret or translate. A picture of him was put out yesterday by the Metropolitan Police on their social media accounts, and a few hours later, they said that there had been an arrest and he was being prosecuted for a public order offence. Yeah. So, you see, this is very much the modern way of dealing with protest. Film them, gather the evidence if you can, and generally speaking, don't wade in with your size 11s and your truncheon like mm. we did back in my day. Yeah. Film them, gather the evidence identify them and then prosecute them later. Right. And, and when you're doing that assessment and looking at footage, do you have to bring in then, if it's Hamas, for instance, which is a prescribed terrorist organisation, yep. and if there's clearly some kind of incitement to that, it's different to the, the Palestinian cause of freedom, for instance, with the Palestinian flag? Yes, quite possibly. But you see, most of that will be covered by the control room, which is in Lambeth in South London, just over one of the bridges, yeah. where the Met Police have a, a remarkable control centre right. with access to all the public cameras, so all the local authority cameras. Like you used to do on the telly, and you remember. Such like. <laughs> yes, indeed, yes. In a TV show a yeah, long yeah, time yeah, ago. Yeah. Yes, and all of that. And so, of course, they have a bigger overall picture. By the same token, I understand why the Home Secretary and others might have been enraged because there was, as I monitored social media traffic over the weekend, Huge reaction. a lot of people yeah. were angry. And again, this is not multiculturalism. Right. This is parallel cultures. So, this has nothing to do with so us. I'm going to make you the Met Commissioner. Sir Mark Rowley, going into that meeting this afternoon, what do you say to the Home Secretary? I'm on £250,000 a year. Thank you for the pay rise, but that's what Sir Mark Rowley is on. I would say pretty much what I've said to you. There are interpretations of the word. If you, as a legislator, as the Home Secretary, want to get a bill yeah. pushed through Parliament to make jihad that kind of work, right. but that is very... That's treading on dangerous territory. Right. I just wonder whether his, his card up his sleeve is the fact that the Crown Prosecution Service looked at this and agreed with the Met's assessment. I strongly suspect somebody from the CPS will be sitting alongside some out this afternoon. Thank you very much indeed for, uh, for that, and we'll uh, obviously see what emerges from that meeting this afternoon. Peter, thank you very much for being with us.